Welcome back, everybody. Um, today is the day. I am going to take a look at this thing. I've got a plan. Well, I've got something. All the fixtures in place. Tap cons are in. Welded up. Driver's side is where it, where, where everything is supposed to be. Okay. I've got the passenger side has a front and a quarter brace between one and two. Okay. All that being said, wheels are off. I've, you know, rechecked and, um, the frame came down about an eighth inch just by removing the tire, the wheel. Okay. So I'm going to overcompensate. Don't ask me why it came down. I'm logic tells me one thing, but then when I think about it, I'm trying to figure out since everything was static, no, it wasn't that the left side wasn't static static. So yes, of course it would come down. Anyways, God, I'm losing my mind. So I've been like this the whole time. Um, anyway, so here I am when, I mean, when I start putting weight on this back corner, like it doesn't freaking move. I'm really surprised how solid those fixtures are. Um, so generally the weight being with nothing holding up the weight, drop the frame. So I think I have to cut it. I'm thinking about what cuts I may need to make. I was going to chain it down and just try to bend it, but I don't, I'm not going to do that. Don't ask me why. I'm just not going to, I might do a relief cut. And when I say relief cut, I'm literally just talking the width of a blade to see if that gap will close up and I'll do that here. See what happens. Then I'll, I'll have to kind of deliberate as to where to go next. Clearly, I could probably disconnect this and see what happens, but then I won't get it back in. Um, I don't want to cut there because I want this whole brace to be consistent, right? So maybe right behind uh, that brace or in front of that brace rather. Uh, and then um, I don't want to loosen any of that up because when I tighten it up, it's just going to go back where it is. So some, some thinking to do here. Don't worry. Matt's been involved. He has been made aware of what's about to go down. So I think it was just inevitable. I'm chopping it up. I'm, it's such a dramatic term. I'm going to cut, make relief cuts on the frame strategically and then make them to where I can clearly weld them up where I get the desired result. And at that point, you know, if I have to plate those, those uh, incisions or whatever you want to call them, then I'll plate it. But I think the fact that I'm going to go through, put some heat on it and weld it up, yes, Think that will be fine. I don't, I just, I gotta, I'm gonna be really careful and just make sure I'm methodical about how I put this all back together. So it's definitely strategic. I'm just not willy nilly taking my grinder, or my cutoff wheel, and just cutting shit. Anyways, come along. We're gonna make some sparks and cut some stuff and see if we can't get this thing close. All right, here's the moment of truth, okay? Here's the bubble. Yeah. Ugh. All right. So, all right. I'm gonna take a minute here, gather my thoughts and see what's next. All right, so just to kind of say all this out loud so I can hear myself thinking here. The progress is not gonna be measured by huge, huge gains here, right? We're looking at a bubble, we're trying to get it plumb, we're trying to get it you know, between the lines and I need to overcompensate for a little bit of sag that that corner's gonna have when there's nothing supporting it. So I gotta go just a touch further than I need, right? So that's kind of where my head's at with this. I've got a little bit, oh my God, sorry, I won't throw up. I've got a little bit there. I got what I needed there. I'm not what I needed, but I got, I, I got a start. It's starting to move, okay? So 
where I'm gonna cut next, I think, is gonna be right here in front of this brace. That is, I think, the best way to compartmentalize everything correctly. This is the DIY way of doing this, okay? Let's be clear, if I had a machine, they'd be bending this, they'd pull in chains, they'd have all the cantilevered pulleys and all that jazz, and we'd be doing this probably the quote unquote right way. But here we are, trying to end the saga. And I think I'm onto something. So I'm gonna scribe a line, get laid out there. Should take me just a second. All right, moment of the truth, number two. Okay, I really just need to get the bubble to the other side of the line. I'm gonna sit back and think about this for a minute and see if I need to maybe make another cut or if I just need to leave it alone for a minute. Day two. I let this thing rest, just kind of curious what that would do. And I think like a skosh is about as much as I'm gonna get. So if you look, that looks dead nuts. That's right, right as rain. But on the mounts, um, it shows not quite. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop that uh, diff brace. I'm gonna hopefully suspend it. I don't know how that's gonna go down. So these diff pucks are interesting. Uh, the idea is for the puck to actually sit flush with the bottom of this insert so that when you put your bottom plate on, it's flush, solid bushing, right? But they also tell you to use a spacer if you have any room in here at all. All right, so clearly everything's binding up. I can't just simply drop the brace and everything falls. So I took the two, the front mount off. I'm taking the axles and we'll see if this works. All right, my hang up was the through bolts on the sway bar mounts. <clears throat> They're on, it's on jacks. I have access here, clear, ready to go. I took all the pressure off of that corner of the um, frame and now I'm ready to cut. So there's a huge access hole here. I definitely want to stay. I don't want to pick the weakest point of the frame. So I need to be, like I said earlier, pretty strategic. This, these holes, I think add rigidity, of course. I think there's some, some structural importance to that. I don't, I think I can run through it as long as it's well lined up. I certainly don't want to eliminate it. So I'll just come a bit off center. Well, if that didn't do it, I do not know what is going to do. That's it, pretty straightforward. Nope. There you go, all the way underneath. And then this is the kind of structural hole I was referring. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry guys. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna put a level up right now. I, I can't, I can use this. I guess I can put this right back up here. And let's see. That looks pretty darn good. All right. I am, I believe, where I need to be, okay? And I've kind of got to pick my battles here. <clears throat> the rear diff brace, if you want to review back, like it's on the right side of that, uh, that line. Uh, everything's clamped down really well. Or, or it's not torqued down, but it's flush. And 
I ended up dropping the diff, cutting that back. You can see the remnants of that cut. But this level tells me I'm actually low, which is good for droop. I've got, I've got this not supported on this side. So that's, that's telling me I'm good to go. This one is, is pretty much dead nuts. And this actual degree finder, which is, you know, I'm only as good as the tools that are calibrated that I'm using, right? So just doing the best I can with what I have. This is high. The angle is talking about the um, pass or the driver's side. So if like, for example, if I lift this up, well, it zeroes out, it's close. It'll actually flip. So once I go down below plumb or level, it'll actually pivot this side. So this is telling me I'm good. And all I did, all I did was make three cuts. Boom, boom, boom. All right. The saga for the most part is resolved, is over. Hopefully I am, <clears throat> I am now going to get ready and start figure out how I'm going to weld this up. So Saturday morning, I'm going to get the welder turned on. I'm going to do a little bit of brainstorming, figure out. I mean, I've had some people tell me plate it on the inside, which means I would have to relief, cut the bottom side, slide plate up, drill pilot holes, and then spot weld. I'm not sure it's structurally, you know, from a layman's standpoint, that makes all the sense in the world. Maybe if anything, and I don't really care. I really don't want people to see it. I don't want it to be glaring, but I, it's, it's on video, right? Not hiding anything. It's an honest car. So I'm going to probably do like some structural welding based on what I've seen off of some pipe, uh, pipeline channels and some heavy structural steel welding for real thick steel um, and multiple passes. Try to be pretty about it. We'll see. Anyways, enough talking. Back to work. All right, making progress. You guys have done such an awesome job sticking around <laughs> that I'm gonna shoot straight to the end. Cause you guys like, trust me, if, if I was you and I was still there, I'd be like, come the on man. Not because uh, I'm a jerk, but because I'm impatient and I just want the action. So, well, I'm going to work on this, get this done, and then I'm going to get some finished product done, and I'll do a small excerpt on how I did it and blah, 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 in case anybody's interested. All right, well, it's not exactly the finished product, but I have probably 90-something percent. Here, let me turn the camera around. All right. <clears throat> Don't you dare judge me. <laughs> I know. I'm fully aware of what that is and what that looks like. <clears throat> but what I do feel comfortable with is that in the great words of anybody that <clears throat> tied anything down in the back of their truck, that thing ain't going nowhere. Like that, or, oh God, I almost died. That, here, there's that one. Okay, no, they're not pretty, they're not. I'm not a welder, I'm not a professional welder, all right? Here's the other one. Oh God. I mean, it looks relatively uniform. It's about 90% done. I'm probably gonna, I may touch these up and grind them a little bit, but I really don't want to because grinding sucks. So when everything's said and done, I'm right where I want to be. When I support this side, or if I were to let that side down, that side would droop and this thing would be low. So success, that's, I think it's a success. Are these gonna hold? There's no doubt in my mind. Um, yeah, so only time will tell. So the frame saga hopefully is over and I can move on to the body. 
I'm really debating how I want to, if I want to break this thing down, finish welding everything up, put the gussets in, everything that I was planning on doing, or if I want to get the fenders on it, you know, I, I just got to figure out the route I want to go right now. So <clears throat> but that's it. If you hung around again, thank you. You know, everybody has a threshold, myself included. You know, there's a level of professionalism when it comes to doing this stuff that if it's absolutely freaking horrible, it's I can't watch it. I'm like, Ooh, nope, no thank you. So hopefully this doesn't meet that threshold. Hopefully this is, you know, manageable. And uh, you guys get a good look at what I have to do to, to get stuff done. So I usually get enough information on how to do something to like get started and then I try to figure it all out on my own I, I'm just, I think killed me yet so anyways again thanks everybody Matt thank you uh for coming over and like keeping track of all of the stuff the processes the measurements the you name it to make sure I don't get well just to make sure I get to where I'm at right now because otherwise I'd still be sitting on the stool trying to beat my head against the wall like where do I start where do I finish where do I Whatever. So I'll stop gabbing. Um, hopefully it gets a little bit more entertaining now. And we can get back to fenders or something cool. And uh, thanks for everybody who's commented and chimed in. Uh, your support, it's really helpful. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks.